Pat, thank you for the courage to share your story. Um, I think it takes enormous courage for anyone to get up and tell about their personal health and harm. And today, this story is understood. It's accepted. We know what happened. When Pat started in 1990, people were still in denial. And the government has yet to step forward and say, yes, we harmed the downwinders, and we're going to provide justice and compensation for them. Um, and it's bizarre to me that the United States government uh, is refusing still today to take responsibility for what it did to the downwinders. It is taking responsibility for the downwinders from the Nevada test site. It is taking responsibility for what it did to the uranium miners in the southwest. It is taking responsibility for, after even longer years of denial that it caused any harm at Hanford and other weapons plants to the workforce, they're all being compensated and recognized and apologized to, but not the downwinders of the northwest. And what it says to me is that Hanford is a story of the river, and it is a river of lies that still flows past the Hanford site day after day. From 1946, those declassified records that Pat talked about included records for the 1946, the Army Corps, memo saying we need to take, continue to classify all records about contamination and health risks from fish in the river as top secret until we solve, there's a quote, this public relations problem. Oh my God. <laughs> 1946. Of course, they couldn't solve it because the truth is too devastating. And as we'll go forward, the lies continue even as we talk this week. Um, luckily, John did this fabulous job of introducing all the background to Hanford, and I get to skip all that background and jump right into stuff. That was a fabulous <coughs> tour, John. Thank you very much, because you really gave us a fabulous tour of Hanford. and. Um, you know, I'm going to just skip over. Uh, there's another shot of the white bluffs of the Columbia River. This, the Hanford Reach National Monument one day will be a beautiful place. Right now, it's the only national monument too contaminated for public use. And what the relevance of the history of what we did to the downwinders going forward is that we are about to commit the same sins on the next hundred generations by saying to them, go out here, use the Hanford Reach National Monument, be our guest, put your children in the river, eat the fish. We cleaned it up without telling you that the risk that they are calling acceptable is as high as a fatal cancer risk for children as 5% if they drink the water flowing from the site. Just from one unlined set of radioactive waste ditches. John talked about the radioactive waste ditches, but um, I love quoting Ron Wyden about this. He uh, says, it's been illegal for decades to dig a hole in your backyard and put your pizza boxes in it. It's illegal for you to have a municipal garbage dump that doesn't have a liner. It's been illegal for decades. But your federal government thinks that it's fine to operate unlined ditches with radioactive waste. 
And the state of Washington, I'm embarrassed to say, operates a commercial radioactive waste dump in the center of Hanford with unlined ditches, which Heart of America, Northwest, and the Akama Nation are suing over because that one set of unlined ditches is already leaking, and the contamination from it is projected to cause a fatal cancer risk to Native American children who have treaty rights to live along, fish, grow plants, a 5% fatal cancer rate. When you are a nation of 10,000 people and your government says, go ahead and use this, it's safe, knowing that 5% of your children may die of cancer if they follow that and exercise their treaty rights, that's genocide. 